Thanks. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, hi, my name is Divine Odazi. Uh, I'm a technology evangelist at Several Nines. And today I'll be talking about simplifying cloud native application delivery with the open application model and Kubevela. So, yeah. Okay. So, a little bit about me. I do delivery at Several Nines. So, I recently joined Several Nines. So basically advocating for uh, sovereign DBAS, right? Database as a service. I love writing. Uh, I was writing before I did technical writing. So I was writing non-fiction and like fiction and stories and stuff. So I'm a certified Kubernetes application developer, AWS solution architect. Was kind of drawn into Kubernetes, right? Then I love traveling, even though I hate airports. There's an entire story to that. So yeah, so how this talk will go. So first of all, I'll talk about why this talk is important, then what the open application model is, what Kubevela is, then I'll talk about like abstracting the, the architecture of applications with like the components of the open application model and Kubevela, which is components, uh, component traits and uh, more. Then I'll compare kind of like compare Kubevela and other existing software and talk about who uses Kubevela, right? Then the community and yeah, some uh, more resources to like learn more about Kubevela. So this talk is not really like technical, technical, right? So it's basically more of like sharing my experience, learning about uh, a project I found on the uh, CNCF landscape. So why this talk is important? So, so if you look at a bit about on the date, right, uh, June 8th this year, so I kind of was just like checking out the CNCF landscape and I saw Kubevela, right, an incubating project. So I have not really heard about it and I've been like in the CNCF space for like quite some time, more than a year and two years. So I kind of like just was researching about it. Uh, yeah, this is quite interesting. I asked in the CNCF Slack, and yeah, this is kind of the survey, the question I asked, and most people told me it's their first time, right, uh, hearing about Kivela. So I had some conversations with some people, and I, I thought it's something interesting to talk about, right, sharing my learning and just give kind of like an overview. Then, yeah, if you want to go more technical into it, you can uh, check out the documentation and try hands-on, right. So uh, the goal of the CNCF project, aside from hosting projects, your goal of CNCF, aside from hosting projects, is also to support them, create educational material. So basically, this talk is doing that, right, through the Cloud Native Reject. Um, yeah, so to the meat of the uh, talk, what is the open application model, right? The goal of the open application model is to make it easy to, for developers to describe Cloud Native applications, right? So uh, I'm more of a developer. I wouldn't say, like, um, more of an infrastructure guy. So I know getting into Kubernetes, uh, how to do it, like a lot of stuff. Uh, Kubernetes, we, we, we all agree, is, it has kind of like a steep learning curve, right? For someone who, has, who doesn't have like kind of an infrastructure experience, right? Uh, it was announced back in 2019 uh, by Microsoft in collaboration with Alibaba. And it's focused on defining applications instead of uh, containers, right? Uh, abstracting away the infrastructure. So it's more uh, beneficial for developers, right? And we'll see more about that. Then uh, developers write uh, the list YAML, right? So you still definitely have to write some configuration, right? But you do not write as much as interacting with uh, Kubernetes, right, on its own. So it's all the open application model on its own is platform agnostic in the sense you can deploy it both on Edge and on IoT devices. It is it's not really like a focus just on Kubernetes, right? So it's, it's how you describe your application. So it's from this model, right? So basically, this is uh, an architectural diagram of the Opicon application model. So how it uh, defines application on based on con components and traits. So components are like what the, you want to deploy, right? So components are really, you can say components are focused on the developers, right? The people deploying the application. So you build your application, you build your uh, create them into containers, so you define them as components and you deploy them, right? Then you have traits, so this is how your uh, application will operate. So um, the traits, right, are mostly what the platform teams would do, right? So these are you reusable uh, building blocks that it's kind of like, if you look at it, you're kind of like creating an IDP, right? Internal development platform for your developers, for them to reuse, and this can now be deployed on several runtime platform uh, across the multi-cloud, IoT, on edge, and on-prem. So now to Kubevela, right? Kubevela is a software delivery platform. Um, 
based on the open application model to make deploying applications easier on hybrid environments. So it's infrastructure agnostic, right? Uh, programmable and just as the open application model is, it's application centric. So Privella designs, uh, is design is for, for separation of concern, like I mentioned, right? So traits, you see this mostly the operators that are defining, that are creating the traits, right? Then uh, you have the end users who are the developers. So if you look, uh, yeah. So this is basically how Q, uh, Kubevela works, right? So the platform team, the infrastructure guys, they enforce the best practices of how applications should be deployed. The stay, you are, we have the staging closer, the production environment. They using uh, Kubevela definitions, right? Which are uh, policies, traits, uh, workflows. So they, they tell you how you should de deploy your application, right? So it's centric for that particular company. So you, it's not really like, okay, uh, everyone has the same way that you deploy your application. So it's the platform thing that defines it. So my first interaction with Kivela, so initially I thought, okay, this has, is opinionated. But I, I started to read more and like go through the documentation. It's not really opinionated. So you determine how you deploy your application, right? So when these definitions, these capability templates, right, are defined, the environments are created, so it moves on to the end user, right? So it enjoys a past-like uh, experience. So you know, like using Heroku and like Cloud Foundry, kind of like everything is done for you, right? So you basically write, uh, sorry, okay. You write, like I said, the least uh, YAML configuration. You choose your target environment. So just like, um, just like uh, you create, uh, a deployment on, you create a deployment to deploy an application, deployment template manifest to deploy an application on Kubernetes. So you do uh, similar to that, but it's not, instead of being called the deployment, it's called an application. So that application will have uh, components, it will have traits, it will have policies to be enforced. So all these are, are predefined. Then uh, the, okay. So, uh, yeah, so a component, you can have, in a particular application, you can have more than one component, right? So you can have a component, then you can have like other services that the component needs to run, right? So you, let's say your main application component, then you have the database component, then you have some other services uh, needs to run, maybe uh, for caching and yeah. Then benefits of this approach, right? So for developers, uh, I know my experience coming from a development background, interacting with Kubernetes, uh, and also recently, like during uh, when I was writing the Kubernetes certification exam, I, I had a particular question that I had to make sure is the right API, uh, uh, API um, version, right? So this is something developers struggle with, right? And also dealing with a lot of parts, moving parts in Kubernetes. And yeah, like I said earlier, the benefits are more towards the end users, towards developers. Then the platform teams it provides them with reusable capabilities, right? And enforcing those best practices according to your organization and your team. And uh, Kubevela is not really like opinionated, like I talked about, right? So initially, uh, in Tweet, I can't, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing the uh, company. So the company that produced the Turbo Tax and stuff. So they actually were comparing different tools to use Helm customize, uh, cross-plane and all. So before then, right, when they did that comparison, Kubevela didn't have a GitHub, uh, GitOps uh, integration, but now it does. So it's actually been evolving to incorporate, it doesn't really like replace uh, the technologies you use, but to incorporate the technologies and uh, make things easier. Uh, then, yeah, you know, I talked about being application-centric and making things easier for the uh, developers. So basically, this is an application, right? So you have an, uh, an application manifest file, you have components, you have the traits, so how the application will operate. Then you have um, policies, right? Security groups, um, health checks, and everything uh, the application needs. Then you have the workflow, which are the steps, right? For how the application will be deployed. This is what uh, the developers, right, would interact with. So it abstracts uh, having to deal with, like, bunch of uh, manifest files, configuration, and stuff. So yeah, then next, comparing uh, Kubevela versus other existing software. 
So Qvela versus CI, CD uh, softwares like GitLab, uh, Circle CI, Jenkins, and some sort. So it doesn't really like replace. So you say it's continuous delivery, right? So you still have to, you use your uh, you if you're you're already using Jenkins, right? So it's focused more of the deli more on the delivery of your application and comparing it to GitOps, right? So that's what like I talked about into it doing the survey and all. So as a then as a last year early last year you didn't really have uh, a GitHub in GitOps integration but now it's you can integrate Argo CD Flux CD and uh, for pass so like I talked about it gives that kind of like a pass like experience but seeing like it's open source right and it's it, it gives you flexibility right and the fact that you can integrate it with other open source too and with home right so I don't know if you noticed in the last uh, uh, yeah, so basically, you don't, it doesn't replace Helm. So you can, anything you want to deploy, right? You can deploy, your components can be a Helm chart, can be a, a, a cloud uh, formation template, a Terraform module. So yeah, so it's something to help your developers, like makes your developers' life easier, right? And abstract away the complexity of Kubernetes. And yeah, so who uses Kubevela? So um, Qvela is mostly used by companies out of Asia because, like I talked about, uh, it was created uh, collaboration between Microsoft and Alibaba. So Alibaba used Qvela. So a really notable uh, user is ByteDance, right? The uh, creator of uh, TikTok. So they use Qvela. Shin uses Qvela. They use it in production, and they has their documentation on how. They use Qvela. So you can easily scan this QR code to like learn more about how they use Qvela. And there are another company that actually been advocating for Qvela and the company is built around Qvela is Naptive. So it's a company out of Spain, yeah. So uh, they recently they gave a talk at KubeCon EU uh, earlier this year on Qvela, and I also linked the talk in my slides. So yeah, so companies are using it right in production. This is a a whole, I just give, added a section of the list, right? It's a full long list. So most companies are obviously testing it out in production. Does it fit their use case? Does it help them make things better and streamline their workflow before they move on to uh, uh, using it in production? So yeah, I'm coming towards the end of my talk. So yeah, there's an active uh, channel on the CNCF Slack. All things Qvela, their regular uh, community meetings, and their regular talks on KubeCon, another event, like I mentioned, there was one at KubeCon earlier this uh, year, there was one also last year, and there are some technical articles. So the purpose of my talk, like I talked about earlier, is basically to share more light to uh, people that are looking for, share more light to a, an interesting project, so people are looking for something, an alternative to what they already use, or to make their uh, development workflows better, can check it out and try it out. It's an incubating project, right? And it's something I wanted to do at the beginning of my talk. I don't really know. I forgot to do it. So I don't know how many of you before now have heard about Qvela or have tried it out. So uh, I, I see only three hands. So yeah, it's an incubating project and not a lot of people know about it, right? People are using it in production. So I, I deem this talk uh, necessary and I hope it was interesting and you learned quite a few things. Then um, to learn more about Qvela, there are a lot of articles, and this is a recent, more recent talk. So if you are looking for us to go dive deep into technically beyond what I shared and my talk, you can check out this blog for more technical details on like the origin. And he also have like a roadmap, like I shared in this QR code. So um, yeah, that's the end of my talk, and I hope this was interesting and. Yeah, you can ask me any question. I'm not a Kubefella expert, but yeah, you can ask me any question. And I hope I'll be able to answer that. And yeah, I'm active on social media. And I hope you learned 1802 from this talk. Thank you very much. Um. Thanks for that. That was a very information intense presentation. I apologize, I'm a Kubevela newbie. I was not familiar with it before. But just to understand the capabilities, I'm trying to understand the level of, of abstraction that this provides. So for example, 
Uh, if I'm a developer and I'm using this uh, open, open application model, does that mean the platform team transparently without my knowledge can decide, for example, based on my traffic patterns, I can deploy these things as a K-native function as a service so rather I'm than a deployment? Or? I can't really hear you from this. Okay, let me conclude. Oh, uh, sorry. Um, Who are these speakers? Sorry. I guess I'm trying to understand okay. in terms of what Kubevela enables. Does this allow the implementation of how the application is deployed to be uh, changed? Uh, or, so, yeah, so, so uh, like I talked about, the platform team, right? Mm -hmm. They predefine how the application should be deployed, right? Mm -hmm. So, the best practice is everything that the application needs, the traits. Uh, so most as a developer, you basically just take what you need, right, and deploy your application. So obviously there will be some communication between the developers and the platform team. Oh, this is what I need. But it abstracts away having to have to deal with like DNS and you have to you're having to deal with ingresses and like every moving part of the application, right? Uh, in order to do, like question a deployment, right? I've been to deal with okay, uh, what CPU resources you need, memory, and also abstract away with that. So you just there will obviously be some communication between the developers and the platform team. So it just makes their life easier, right? And um, every component that's been created is reusable, right? And it can be deployed on every environment with uh, the open application uh, model. Yeah. So I don't know if that answers your question. Well, I guess I'm just wondering, is this a standard or does this op Ooh. operate? So, for example, if I define as part of my traits that this needs a public ingress, does it then go provision a load balancer? Or is that just like, I have defined that that is a requirement for this application? So, yeah, so you, you can define, okay, that's a requirement for this particular application, and you can define several like requirements or several types of application. So... Yeah, so the spec is, is flexible, right? It's not like it's a standard on how you must follow. It's not rigid, so it's flexible. It's not opinionated on this is how you must do things. So depending on the team, depending on the particular application, you define uh, the traits, which are what they call how you operate your application, which is like traits are ingresses, uh, uh, load balancers, and, and stuff. Gotcha. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, thank you.